Over the past 24 hours, China has managed to rattle global stock markets, strike fear in Hong Kong, and prompt a warning from the United States. The cause was a major national security announcement. A correspondent in Beijing, Hong Kong and Washington will take us through the issues raised and the impact they're likely to have. But first to Hong Kong, where China's plans for a new security law caused outrage in some quarters. Beijing wants to set up enforcement mechanisms in Hong Kong and Macau to safeguard national security. The bill has already been submitted to China's parliament, and Chief Executive Carrie Lam says that Hong Kong will adopt the law as soon as possible. Activists led by the leader of Hong Kong's Democratic Party marched to the Chinese liaison office to denounce the plans. And there are concerns unrest will flare. There have already been calls for protests. Scuffles broke out in Hong Kong's Legislative Council as opposition lawmakers expressed their anger. Two legislators had to be dragged out of the chamber. They say the law goes against the one country, two systems framework. But Mrs. Lam says the law would not undermine the city's legal system, nor will it interfere with judicial independence. Roland Lim tells us more. The chief executive, uh, Carrie Lam, says she'll fully cooperate with Beijing to enact the national security law as soon as possible and to fulfill her duties to safeguard national security. She and her administration still has the responsibility to complete local legislation of Article 23 of the Basic Law. Now, according to the national security legislation to be added as part of the annex to the Basic Law, the Chinese parliament will empower itself to set up a legal framework and to implement mechanisms to prevent and punish secession, subversion, separatism, and foreign interference. Now, this is a narrower legal framework than the original Article 23 bill previously introduced. Uh, that Beijing says the city still needs to enact as soon as possible. Um, that would actually also make punishable the theft of state secrets and to prohibit foreign international organizations from conducting political activities in the territory. The new uh, national security resolution will mean that one, mainland agencies would be free to set up bases here in the SAR, including, uh, for example, the secret police branch to tackle terrorism activities in Hong Kong. Right now, though, under the basic law, law enforcement in Hong Kong rests with the Hong Kong government and mainland agencies cannot operate in Hong Kong without the local government's permission. Now, opposition lawmakers warn that this could result in random arrests, unlimited custody and torture of suspects. And number two, apart from calling for a speedy implementation of Article 23, Beijing is also calling on the administrative, the legislature, as well as the judicial pillars, the courts of Hong Kong, to prevent and punish any who harm the national security rules here. Now, Carrie Lam also has to promote and to push for national security education and hand in regular reports to the central government on a regular basis. In terms of reaction, former chief executive C.Y. Leung says that the law doesn't impinge on foreign investments or freedom of local residents because this is what Hong Kong needs to do. Legislative Council President Andrew Leung also says he respects, understands and supports Beijing's decision and dismiss concerns that this intervention marked the end of one country, two systems, uh, as Beijing is, of course, circumventing the Legislative Council to implement uh, national security laws. However, principal lecturer at the University of Hong Kong's law department, Eric Cheung, says that this is essentially declaring that the one country, two systems model has failed and that they think that the basic law cannot improve the current situation, so they need to find another way to handle the issue. And he's also deeply concerned that the move would almost certainly erode people's rights and freedoms. Then we have Civic Party's lawmaker, Tanya Chen. She's the convener of the opposition camp in, Lo in Lechko. Now she's urging the public to express their views by taking part in the upcoming Legislative Council election in order for the pandemics to regain veto powers in Lechko. There have already been calls on social media, uh, on Reddit forum sites like uh, LIHKG and messaging app Telegram 
for demonstrations to take place. Now, many are proposing a march in Causeway Bay, the city's most famous uh, shopping district, on Sunday. And for protesters as well to surround the Legislative Council building on Wednesday, that's next Wednesday, when the National Anthem Bill is voted on. Smaller protests have erupted across the city in the past month, mostly in shopping malls after the arrest of 15 pro-democracy leaders for unlawful assembly. The United States has criticized Beijing's plan. President Trump vows that Washington will react very strongly against the attempt to gain control over Hong Kong. China says it opposes foreign interference and will retaliate if oppressed. Xiangang Let's cross over to Simon Marks in Washington, D.C. Simon, is the Trump administration likely to take strong action and what could that actually look like? Well, there's every indication that the Trump administration will take strong action if and when uh, these new legisl- these uh, new proposals uh, are enforced. I mean, you heard President Trump there saying uh, that he anticipates a very strong reaction. The State Department went into more detail, a spokeswoman saying that any national security legislation that does not reflect the will of the people of Hong Kong would be highly destabilizing and would be met with strong condemnation from the United States and the international community. There are already two senators, one Democrat and one Republican, uh, drafting legislation that would sanction uh, Chinese officials and entities that are involved in enforcing uh, this proposed legislation and also sanction financial institutions that deal with those uh, individuals. So there's certainly that possibility uh, of reprisals further ahead. And that State Department uh, statement left open the possibility that the United States would also seek uh, to put an international alliance together, uh, reflecting anger and fury towards Hong Kong. I think there is a real sense here, Steve, uh, that this is a a, a page being turned, a new chapter beginning, uh, and it comes at a moment when already the US-China relationship was under so much pressure uh, as a result of uh, COVID-19. Simon, you rightly said that, you know, a new chapter beginning because some observers, they believe that this signals the end of Hong Kong's semi-autonomous status. If that is the case, then how would this impact the United States? Well, that's an absolutely critical question, Glenda. Earlier this week, the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, uh, declined or or, or delayed uh, the certification, (coughs) excuse me, (coughs) very early in the morning, the certification uh, of Hong Kong under the Hong Kong Democracy Act uh, that President Trump signed just last year. Uh, That certification is the imprimatur that the United States provides uh, saying that Hong Kong is indeed sufficiently autonomous to carry on benefiting from uh, an exemption to the tariffs that have been imposed by the United States against the mainland. Uh, Now, if the United States decides that that degree of autonomy has been pierced as a result of this action by Beijing, uh, then Hong Kong would lose those exemptions from U.S. tariffs. That would have a massive impact, of course, on Hong Kong business. It also has the potential to have a massive impact on American businesses doing business with Hong Kong. But that's definitely one substantial weapon uh, in the Trump administration's arsenal. Um, That's the bigger question, isn't it, Simon, about China and U.S.? They are in the middle of negotiating a massive trade deal right now. So this could significantly change that as well, couldn't it? 
Oh, absolutely, Steve. I mean, I think all bets already were looking pretty off with regard to uh, the future of trade negotiations. I mean, there's a, a reality here of the electoral calendar. We're less than six months away from a presidential election in the United States. Donald Trump has ratcheted up the rhetoric against China uh, over the last few weeks as a direct result of coronavirus. Uh, there's every indication that that rhetorical war of words is going to continue all the way through until the election this November, with the president eager to continue pointing the finger of blame at China and the World Health Organization. This news regarding Hong Kong only uh, creates a greater likelihood that that is going to be happening uh, in the weeks and months ahead. Uh, and the Chinese also are very aware that there's potentially uh, only uh, an eight or nine month window left now for the Trump presidency. Because remember, if Donald Trump loses in November, he'll be leaving office in January of 2021. So they too have every reason potentially uh, to put all of that on the back burner uh, and to wait while they uh, explore the outcome uh, of America's presidential election and what that may mean for the US relationship with China. So at this point, Hong Kong and this issue uh, is uh, another um, problem uh, that suggests things with regard to trade are going to be kicked down the road until after the election. Okay, thanks very much for getting us up to speed. Simon Mark speaking to us from Washington, D.C.